Liza Destiny officially welcomed and the University of Guyana proceeds with accreditation process. Welcome to InfoHub. It's Tuesday, September 10. We have lots to tell you today. First Lady, Your Excellency Sandra Granger, speaking at a welcome reception for the Liza Destiny, said Guyana's first floating production storage and offloading vessel will benefit all Guyanese. I would like to hope for the Liza Destiny, the partners and the crew that it will, it will bring us all the good things we anticipate. Not only the profits and return of investment for the Exxon and its partners, but also for the people of Guyana, and in particular, our children, a better quality of life, sustainable development, and everything from which good oil will flow. First Lady Sandra Granger. In his remarks to the gathering, Director Department of Energy Dr. Mark Bino stated that the arrival of the Lisa Destiny, Ghana's first floating production storage and offloading vessel, represents a historic milestone for Ghana. Guyana is about to experience a tectonic shift in its development trajectory. The discovery of significant oil offshore the country shores since 2015 by SO Exploration and Production Guyana Limited and its joint venture partners, Hess Guyana Exploration Limited and Sinop Petroleum Guyana Limited, estimated at more than 6 billion barrels of oil equivalent to date, is expected to be the main catalyst for this transformation. Rod Henson, president of ESO Exploration and Production Ghana Limited, echoed the energy director's sentiments. The arrival of Elisa Destiny is a historic event. And first oil will mark a turning point in Guyana's history, ushering in a future of enormous potential. Now that, that will mean something different to each person in Guyana, just as each person's destiny is different. The commemorative cultural performances in the forms of dance, poetry, and musical rendition. The event was attended by Prime Minister the Honorable Moses Nagamutu, government ministers and senior officials, members of the diplomatic corps, and special invitees. Earlier in the day, Mrs. Granger, along with Dr. Bino, Ministers of State, Finance and Natural Resources, the Honorable Don Hastings Williams, Honorable Winston Jordan and Honorable Raphael Trotman were given a tour of the vessel. Felicia Valenzuela, InfoHub. As Ghana prepares for its fourth rung of mutual evaluation by the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force and the Financial Action Task Force, the Ministry of Legal Affairs continues to boost its capacity for the major assessment. The ministry hosted a seminar of trained assessors in anti-money laundering, countering the financing of terrorism and proliferation, AML, CFT, PF, and the Bank of Ghana. The exercise allowed assessors to reflect on additional work that needs to be done in combating money laundering and the financing of terrorism. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, the Honorable Basil Williams, who is also chairman of the AML, CFT, PF, National Coordinating Committee reminded the assessors of the integral role they play in Ghana's success. It is important for us to ensure that we have in place adequate and effective measures to protect our financial system because the country's reputation depends on it. And so we have to ensure we are not abused by money launderers and terrorist financiers. Because of its past experience, the AG said Ghana must resolve not to return to that list but take every step necessary to ensure all systems are effective. We must have effective implementation of AML, CFT laws and regulations. We must have effective investigations, prosecutions, exchange and sharing of information among law enforcement agencies and relevant authorities at both national and international level for investigation, effective oversight by supervisory bodies of reporting entities and effective mechanisms to deal with cross-border organized crime. During the fourth round of compliance monitoring, the FATF will conduct reviews to assess Ghana and other countries' levels of implementation of the organization's recommendations, providing an in-depth description and analysis of each country's system for preventing criminal abuse 
of the financial system. Felicia Valenzuela, InfoHub. The University of Guyana is moving ahead with the process of registration and accreditation from the National Accreditation Council. The university has this year seen its largest enrollment in history, with almost 4,000 new students registered for courses in the 2019-2020 academic year. The National Accreditation Council, NAC, is the locally based and globally recognized agency providing the highest quality assurance for post-secondary and tertiary education and related services like UG. Deborah Jack, Executive Director of the National Accreditation Council, Guyana. The University of Guyana has begun the registration process. The University of Guyana was established by an Act of Parliament in 1963 and has approval to operate in Guyana by the government. Recognizing that Guyanese graduates venture worldwide for work, travel, and academic furtherance, the university takes the full accreditation of all its programs seriously. It is good for the Un University of Guyana to be registered with the NEC so that their qualification can be rightly recognized by the institution that was set up to do that. The NAC of Guyana was established by an Act of Parliament, which mandated that all post-secondary and tertiary institutions operating in Guyana must be registered with the NAC. Natisha Isaacs for InfoHub. Finance Minister the Honorable Winston Jordan says due to the parliamentary opposition and the Private Sector Commission's failure to nominate representatives, to manage the Ghana Natural Resources Fund through the Oversight Committee, operations by the fund will be hindered. In going forward, what will happen if we can't get the committee set up? We will open the account, right? The account will be governed by the, the law that is in place. It will receive, it will receive the monies, uh, so to speak, um, and it will be parked there until we can get a parliament going because parliament is heavily involved in the withdrawal process. The minister added that recent statements by some sections of the media and opposition supporters show a lack of understanding of the legislation governing the NRF's operations and management. Which is, has been all over the place. We have run extensive full-page ads in virtually all the newspapers, on television, on air and so on. So the, the, the attempt to continue to confuse the public, I think, is just that sadly. Uh, we can go back on the internet and read the legislation. It's a very thorough uh, piece of legislation, um, well, widely praised because of its fact that it's there, it's been completed before forced oil, and it, it makes uh, very, very stringent rules about um, the resources that are to go into the fund, and even more stringent, how it can come out of the fund. The model proffered by the opposition, he noted, suggests that funds be placed directly into the consolidated fund essentially a black hole and an indeterminate entity or person will determine how much will come out to go into the natural resource fund. Our model is everything goes to the natural resource fund. So there's a transparent process. You know how much is in that fund and then there's a detailed process about how it can be withdrawn from the fund. Right? When it gets into the consolidated fund, well, you know, you know what happens. Minister Jordan Ford explained that monies will accumulate very slowly in the NRF and even so, only a portion can be withdrawn. There's not much that can be done, say, in 2020, uh, but post-2020, uh, especially when it's ramped up to Lisa 2 and the other um, discoveries, when we start extracting, then is when we'll be really talking serious money and then is when we can really think about all the major projects that we are thinking. But come 2020, if anybody tells you that they will do big things in 2020 based on our money, uh, you tell them I said, right? Don't like to be. Still to come, JetBlue confirms 2020 flights to Guyana and InfoHub takes a ride along in a David G. bus. Details of these after the break. Are you ready to embark on a truly epic adventure to an undiscovered corner of South America? where some of the most spectacular natural attractions are unveiled within a beautifully diverse landscape. From the wetlands and savannas to the ancient mountains, magnificent waterways and lush and rich rainforest would provide a vast playground for some of the most exotic and breathtaking creatures on the planet including many of the world's giant species. 
this untouched land of mystery and wonder serves up an exclusive experience for travelers. So are you ready for a new, awe-inspiring adventure? Welcome back to nature. Welcome to Guyana. Thanks for staying with us. Guyana is on the verge of adding yet another major airline to cement the connection with North America. This comes as JetBlue officially announces the expansion of its non-stop services that will commence April 2, 2020 between Guyana to New York. According to JetBlue's media website, the airline said it will be introducing a new low fare, high quality choice to travelers in Guyana. Minister of Public Infrastructure, the Honorable David Patterson, has lauded the company's decision to enter the local market. He said the agreement with JetBlue is timely and comes on the heel of continued and sustainable growth in several sectors of our economy. Read more about this on our website, www.dpi.gov.gy. Minister within the Ministry of Agriculture with responsibility for rural affairs, the Honorable Valerie Adams Yearwood returned to the village of San Fortin Burbies to fulfill a commitment made just over a week ago. Following a request made by San Vort resident Lynette Haywood for bicycles to be given to students who sat the recent National Grade 6 assessment examination, Minister Adams Yearwood returned bicycles in tow. I said to her, I'm going to come back and I'm going to bring those bicycles. Minister Adams Yearwood, following the request, she then took the initiative to reach out to business people in the community and businessman Peter Lewis answered the call. I sent him the video from the meeting. <clears throat> to the bottom of it, I put, can you or any other businessman in New Amsterdam, I don't know them, but I'm looking for a donation of four bicycles. In less than three seconds, I got a response saying, I am going to do it. In addition to fulfilling her commitment to having the bikes donated to the children, the minister also fulfilled another commitment to have Chief Executive Officer of the National Drainage and Irrigation Authority, Frederick Flats, come out and meet with the residents of Sandvoort and Joppa to address their drainage and irrigation concerns. This is but the latest in several commitments made by Minister Adam Zierwood that have been delivered in a very timely manner. Reporting for InfoHub, Nikosi Bruce. It's Education Month and today we highlight one of the many initiatives that are making a positive impact on the lives of students across the country, the David G. Bus. For those privileged enough to be chauffeured to school, the David G. Buses may never have any bearing in their lives. But for the thousands of students and parents who utilize these buses, there aren't enough praises that can be sung for the service. Praises that bus driver Frederick Stewart never grows tired of hearing. Some parents thank me you know, for, for what we are doing, thank the region, as a matter of fact, for what they are doing. Because it has been a great help to them, you know, financial-wise and transportation-wise and these type of things, it assists them a lot. Frederick has been operating the David G. bus plying the road between Unity and Le Bon Intention. He starts his pickups from 7.30 and by 8.30, quarter to 9, he finishes up. As our team accompanied Frederick this morning on his trip, one thing was evident. The children were all extremely excited to board their bus. Unfortunately, there are only so many students that can be taken on each bus, something that Frederick wishes to see addressed soon. As a lot of people can see, this bus stays full most of the time. Sometimes I have to refuse the children, and it hurt me sometimes. But I know we can't put our uh, feelings into play, but we have to do the best we could. You know, subsidizing these type of things. We have our teachers as well. They be stranded. Sometimes I have the children in here that I know. They say, that's my teacher. I have her class now. She's stranded, can't catch a bus. I pick her up. Frederick is of the opinion that at least two more buses are needed on the East Coast for them to be able to help all the students, as it is quite clear just the one is not enough. Many of the children, as we can see for ourselves too, just through transportation-wise, they can't go to school. And those are the ones really turn out to be the smartest ones because they have some very smart children. I've observed that myself, truthfully speaking, you know, because you pay attention enough to them. You, you see who wants to learn, you can see who don't want to learn. Because you have some children, they actually wait just for this bus because they're sure 
of going to school. No, 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 they're not being tampered with and these type of things, squeezed and choking these buses and these type of things. While this initiative is merely one part of the 5Bs initiative launched by the APNU AFC government, it is just as impactful as any other aspect of the initiative. As these students line up and wait patiently to go to school and to be taken home, there are those who do the same for the boats. There are students who happily await the breakfast provided by the initiative. All of these factors coming into play help to improve the performance of students all around, as one is more prone to learn when they have no worry about where their next meal is coming from or how they will be getting home. Reporting for InfoHub, Nico Sibers. Before we close, here's a reminder to tune in to The Voice of Ghana on Wednesday, September 11, when the Minister of Public Telecommunications, the Honorable Catherine Hughes, will be on the radio program Insight. That's all for today. Connect with us on WhatsApp, Facebook, and YouTube. Much more news is on our website, dpi.gov.gy, and pop over to Instagram for the latest photo updates at DPI Guyana. Your bridge and weather reports are up next. Goodbye for now.